good there everyone and thank you for joining me here at the start of the middle new campaign in the Kaiser Redux which we're playing as everyone's favorite combined syndicates of America the combined syndicates of America and I didn't realize that I already took out this Baja Mexico but anyways um this is not on the thumbnail this guy Burnham eh, eh, he's an okay guy but really this is the campaign for where we're trying to figure out how to get some uh, Howard Loeb CCCT Utopian Technocracy CSA so basically you gotta play the CSA you gotta win the Civil War then you gotta get to this guy this James guy and then you gotta get Lovestone. And then you basically gotta go with the path towards getting Howard Scott. And do everything you would to get Scott. And then when Scott coos, there's a new election between Scott and Loeb. So basically we gotta win the Civil War, you gotta play as Burnham, then Lovestone, and then Scott. And then, in the end, you might just be able to get this Loeb guy. Because some guy's been asking me to play this campaign a whole bunch or try to get this guy. So we're gonna do a couple focuses here. And then I'm gonna play this off screen a little bit more, and then we'll see what happens. But the dust settles. As the revolution comes to a close and Victor seems to be in sad, we must not take stock and evaluate the state of the army comprehensively. I already proposed a flooring by this project or that to enhance our military might, but the next step for us to get this love stone is plays Burnham. And then we've got to complete all their focuses. So I, I'm going down this route so we get the GI Bill. Massive numbers of demobilized servicemen will be a major issue in the aftermath of the Civil War, of course. We should create education and job training programs to better reintegrate them into civilian life. So we've got to talk about President Burnham. Considered both the dark horse and black sheep of the American radical left, Burnham's promises to protect the American people from foreign incursions to stabilize the socialist republic of one of the day. Basically, we're just going to do a bunch of focuses here for right now. The Marxists. It is in controlling the means of production that the leader is created. We must make sure its resources are fully to put to work in the service of the new proletariat state by nationalizing our largest industries, the Machiavellian. Politics, of course, is more about power than has ever been about morality. Collecting information on prominent socialists and spreading rumors that representatives are already trying to gain the president's favor will lay the groundwork to ensure potential enemies will be too busy fighting each other to unite against the president's policies. So basically, we gotta get to the people Senate down for do these all these literally all these focuses and get down here. The people Senate, which is gonna take forever, but that's okay. The Patriot. President Burnham understands that not only it is managerialism of the future is a future, but also is nationalism without national myths. There will be no social cohesion among the proletariat, and reminding them of their national pride and threats to her being are needed. Technocratic Committee. AWP supporters Howard W. Scott and his technocrats have promised to maximize efficiency if allowed to coordinate our largest industries with via an industrial board. Their scientific management of our nationalized industries shall greatly aid us in the coming conflict. Vertical integration. Gone are the ways of capitalist shops and union rabble rousing. We have now a more efficient means of organizing our industries. Our industries will be organized into more easily overseen economies of scale, nicknamed industrial functions. These will build every part of whatever they are specialized in while absorbing small and medium sized industries. The Continental Socialist Society. Entrusted with enough power to act as a minimal but effective force, the Continental Socialist Society is currently uh, a small fraternal society made up largely of those who asserted in the American Workers Party militia, with government backing. will serve as both bodyguards and counter espionage forces against forces of the reaction. For the sake of secrecy, they only, they only answered to President Burnham, who is also her vice president. But Burn, Burnham's secret is Red Scare. Oh, look at this. Ooh. The king and his loyalists have made their intentions towards us quite clear. Only if we reach out to every citizen and alert them of imperialists who could be under their beds, we can help to overcome their sabotage. The power projection. Our military is behind on the means of striking the enemy via modern means. We should remind the bourgeoisie that the arm of the proletariat stretch far within an investment or research for oil warfare, military industrial state. At long last, the majority of our resources are geared towards military conquests so that we may at last have an opportunity to spread true socialism and a capitalist protection wall. Little currently stands between us and the Entente they choose to attack through Canada. Even less stands between capitalists. Uh, detractors who wish to flee into Canada and give aid to foreign enemies. We must protect our people with an anti-capitalist protection wall to manage our border situation. Paul Robeson takes a world tour. The hiatus that Paul Robeson took from acting to pursue social causes in the past year has greatly expanded his popularity. With a powerful voice and strong support for international cynicalism, Robeson has become the Marian Anderson of the socialists in America, just like Anderson before him. He chose to embark on a world tour to spread his music in support for African American rights to Europe. His stops include the Union of Britain, the Communist of France, and the SRI. These so uh, socialists are uh, re re really Euro European audiences while in contact with the wider world, still find the attraction of black singers to be exotic. Bon voyage, Robeson. Armed Canadian resistance. Well, at the moment, we are short of manpower. There exists in Canada groups discontented with the English king, namely Canadian nationalists, Quebec separatists, and political radicals. Arm them help cause internal strife, and that will weaken Canada and therefore strengthen us. Squeeze the bourgeoisie. According to the committee, former members of the bourgeoisie and the petite bourgeoisie have a large amount of experience in management, making them potentially useful against uh, useful assistance and advisors to our managers. However, it's no vacation as a reward is the mercy of the new state and their existing assets. Or existing assets will be liquidated. We're a war of the craft unions. The craft unions will provide much needed support for our victory. However, many are still on the fence between continuing support us or one of the vanguardist leaders, perhaps. Uh, handing out some military contracts to our supporters will remind them of whose side they're on and what comes to those who stand with the state and our proletariat duties. Uh, all who enjoy the protection of our state against a wage slavery must help their brethren to stand against the enemies of uh, the nation, both foreign and domestic. Being uh, instilling, besides instilling military values into our youth, will encourage both fitness and unity. Military research. Well, we should have our best scientists leading and best scientists and leaders uh, looking to what we should invest our efforts into. Guns, artillery, tanks, or improving our own doctrines, which we choose. 
We're done with, we really finished our line doctrine already, so let's go with tanks. Even though we did do superior firepower, like I said, uh, we're completely done with that one. Air doctrine still needs some more work. Um, other than that, we're looking pretty good for all this stuff over here. Uh, we want to do the GI Bill. This one's not bad. This stuff can all wait. Um, so the Civil War wasn't too bad overall. I mean, we're playing the CSA. It's pretty easy as a CSA, to be honest. Um, we do need to rebuild the country, though. The Great American Revolution is over, but unless something is done, the wounds we have torn open in this country will continue to fester and bleed. We must work with haste to build up an egalitarian, equal, and enduring America for the ruins of the old industrial army. All able bodied citizens are to contribute to the nation. The workers will be categorized into one of seven classes that will decide the work schedules, and obliges them to work upon finishing their educations organized by their managers. Emergency powers. With their population fearful of British Canadian influence and gaining enough political support among the Union leadership, President Burnham can declare martial law and thus take needed measures to counter reactionaries. Neo socialist values. History is, as we know, simply a story of elites taking power and circulating myths among both themselves and the people. Our elites should justify themselves by being committed to standing against capitalist exploitation, directing themselves towards productive tasks, meritocracy, and respecting the rights of our loyal citizens. Likewise, the public will be educating the value of social nationalism. Political rehabilitation. It's high time to recover the damages done by the enemies of the state, including the uh, prominent foe socialists, who are acting as a useful idiots for imperialism. The newly commissioned Gamma Clause, or class, will carry out more undesirable manual labor until found to be politically rehabilitated by their overseers. The production gained from this cheap labor should be able to finish off our depression. Ultimate, ultimatum to the Vanguardists. The Vanguardist leaders hold many reasonable viewpoints on uh, issues of organizing the state, but have failed to fully embrace managerialism. They must stop causing a party divide then, when the future is obvious, and be willing to commit themselves fully to a new social society, putting aside the pipe dreams of a Marxist utopia free of nationalism in a time when we must resist foreign influence. Oaths of Loyalty. Premier of God Save King Billy. Uh, if you're about this, please go right ahead. But with the academy managed by the loyalist technocrats and the political system dominated by Burnham and his vanguard, we can require all members of government to swear allegiance to the party, absorbing existing socialist parties in the AWP while ceasing to pay dues to those listed as reactionaries. Those who don't would merely reveal themselves to be traitors, to post kind of revolutionaries. We finally mass enough power to strike at those who have made it quite clear that they'll never accept the leadership style of President Burnham. While we should not outright try the chairman's most popular socialist critics, a swift political vacation would be helpful. And proletarian commander. With internal enemies decimated and our economy restructured, the president can now take his true title of founder Burnham, commander of the American proletariat. We may focus on global threats as well as bringing all Americans into the managerial fold. The people sent it. The politicians remaining in Congress are a relic of a bygone era. While they can say there, I say where they are for the moment, a Senate of technocrats who represents the heights of our economy and therefore truly represent the workers will be appointed, capable of vetoing any nonsense coming from the lower house. Chemical warfare. Just as it would make little sense to contribute using words or swords after the invention of gunpowder, we cannot fall behind our foes in the latest weapons and development, some of which to promise to ensure American socialism's dominance for the centuries to come if properly if developed properly. The future is now. Burnham's policy, oh boy. Uh, the Machiavellian, yeah, let's go with that one next. Expand continental research. At the moment, Continental Research may merely collect data for the Continental Committee, but it is time to be more ambitious. We should place all research under a single body that would allow or have the funding to have continuous research in the fundamental sciences and help coordinate resources with other Emergency sequences. reserves called up with a declaration of war on the combined syndicates of America by the Kingdom of Canada. Veterans of the Civil War scrambled to enlist the natural reserves, compelled by a feeling that the Canadian government was. Preying upon us at a weakest moment, while the new corps are all spread all over the country, we're ready, they're ready and eager to fight against the enemy. They shall pay for this. So basically, uh, Canada's going to war with us. 20 emergency divisions. They're all right. They're, don't, don't get rid of them. Look at that. Cancel. Boss of the ranks, and we'll see what we can do. Uh, so now we're fighting against the Entente. Uh, Burnham's young protégés, as we have worked to consolidate the nation under a unique regime. President Burnham has continued to develop his own ideology and platform, taking in loyalists and true believers in his own ideas to create his own syncretic movement of authoritarian socialism with technocratic economics and conservative facets of American exceptionalism and nationalism. Along the way, Burnham has picked up two young loyalists who have grown close to him as a mentor and ideological teacher, and who hope the president resists the influence of the ambitious love stone of the native technocrats. Being the devoted Burnham and Knight, Lyndon Hermile LaRouche Jr., and rehabilitated federalist progressive turned conservative progressive Burnham Knight Ronald Wilson Reagan. While Reagan is known for his neoconservative, rightist, left wing economic stances and progressive social agenda fused with his own democratic, socialist, and technocratic Burnhamist views, LaRouche is known for his more outlandish takes, such as a desire to build a bridge or tunnel across the Bering Strait. Ooh, that's awesome. Advocating for the gold standard and for promoting futures, socio-economic and agrarian policies, along with nuclear energy research, energy weapon research, and economic nationalization. To name a few things, of course. However, he's also been plagued by accusations of racism, homophobia, conspiratorialism, xenophobia, and anti-Semitism, among other ills that have ostracized him from some of the more social circles. That sounds really cool. Regardless, these two young politicians and intellectuals serve as the two possibilities of the Burmanite future and two of the likely futures for America. We should watch our careers with close eyes and eager ears, but technocratic claims. The technocrats in our party are pushing for us to make a claim on what they call needed lands, which we control directly by the end of this conflict. Yes. 
And we'll see what happens. We should do okay against these guys. I'm not super concerned, but, you know, you never know. I was trying to help with the French, too, but, you know, things happen. Interception. Thank you very much. It's a red scare. Uh, the Marxist. Uh, proletarian duties, yeah. We were at all this earlier. Local manpower, mobilization, training time, critical population. It's fine. We're in a defensive war, too, by the way, so, I mean... We're just trying to protect ourselves from the evils of the capitalist oppressors. American Artists Congress. The American Artists Congress is an organization that was helped uh, created to unite artistic people around the country to help promote the arts within America. From traditional artwork to filmmaking, all are supported within the Congress. It's quickly become a popular organization and show the new avant-garde art of the revolution, the German. Um, uh, uh, Ernest Hemingway has already begun a plan of, of a series of patriotic publications on life during the revolution. Art for the masses. You guys, huh? Do we actually go to war with you guys? We need more political power for that. Ottawa? Ottawa would be nice this time of year. We were out capital spies that the Entente Royals desire the full of a republic is undeniable and all around us are spies we to strike. The situation is growing tense as labor representatives are nervous of them say they themselves being accused of being capital sympathizers and they oppose their security measures, of course. As both the Congress and the public fill with fear that their very neighbors could be Entente spy agents, they look to us for protection. Detain a controversial few... Make public accusations against low proper representatives in our way. We get way more support. Go after anyone we can just fight. Yeah. We're really focusing on a lot of planes here, even though we could use better guns too. Our ships are doing quite well. And yeah, we love it. CCS, CSS Youth Wing. Lawrence Dennis has proposed a new government pro program in which members of the Young American Workers' Party who are eligible may be chosen as candidates for the Continental Socialist Youth Society, in which there's an apprenticeship to become a full-fledged member of the CSS and even further activism among the students. Wonderful. Wunderbar, some might say. Oh, and this is also Ernest Hemingway here, so we're going to throw you in the mix. Welcome aboard. He's, a, he's got sure bombardment on him for some reason, too. I don't know why, but I'm not going to question it. Excavation 3, fuel probably not going to be an issue, rubber will be though, Nationals Clubs throughout the country. There are several literature clubs called Nationals Clubs that have emerged. Oh look at this, nice, we sunk a lot of enemy ships. They are to help organize writers across the country and are promoting literature and literacy through the social communities, or local communities. They focus on social literature, and particularly the corpus of Edward Bellamy's work. Books for Bellamy. Bellamy? Bellamy? Bellamy. Bellamy. J C S S report J Lovestone. Um, so this is important actually. J Lovestone is the leading member of the leftist faction of the AWP, holding the loyalty of union leaders such as Charles Zimmerman and chunks of our most orthodox Marxist military force who now have no, nowhere left to go, or a liable means of securing forces who now have nowhere. Uh, uh, Securing our leftist base and union support is a little secret that Lovestone is highly ambitious. A few of you, Lawrence Dennis's most recent report only reinforces. According to Dennis, Lovestone has been meeting with more military officials in the recent days and even set up a private meeting with Earl Browder, which is clearly supposed to be a secret from us. Well, perhaps nothing to worry about as Lovestone may simply be playing games against his new rival, Howard Scott, or otherwise securing his position. Dennis requests that we double down on aggressive espionage against Lovestone, although this carries the risk of turning him against us if discovered. Well, we gotta go here, and we gotta get Lovestone, so we need Lovestone. Uh, complete the people's senate and wait about a year about him. Choose to not increase surveillance against him and eventually coup. That'll be fine. So if you increase the surveillance, you can either do nothing and following a bet or let him coup or stop. So we might actually not need to do all these focuses and, and still get love stone. Even then, that's just like step three out of five. I've already we already completed step one, which uh you know we win the civil war. Step two is get Burnham. Step three, get love stone. Step four, get Scott. Step five, get low. Norman Thomas' criticism of militarism. Norman Thomas has given a speech denouncing the CSA's more militaristic policies, especially its increased conscription and propaganda under the president. He warned that supporters of liberty were not diligent. The new uh, state could become nearly as immoral as imperialist powers. Gadfly. Gadfly. Coffee. Ah, Red World. I haven't played that one in a long time. Uh, shouldn't be too much longer, though. Yeah, seriously, the CS uh, Canada should die very soon, as long as we get Vancouver, probably. That was a big one. There we go. Ah, very nice. I still want Mexico, though. I always love picking up Mexico. It's just, an, it's just an American thing, you know. You just have to take out the Mexicans. It's just... It's the American in me that wants to do it every single time. Medium airframes? Uh, engine fours... Well, what are we making here? Fighters? Tactical bombers? Um, 
Defense turrets. Oh, look at this. I've never actually used these before. I always get the light defense turrets, heavy defense turrets, defense cannons. Slightly less for four more. Slightly less max speed. Slightly more weight. Times two. Good defense cannons. Of electronics, air to air. What about this one? Still not bad. Nice. I love, I hate how like messy this is now. Hey, there goes Canada, nice. This is so messy seeing all this stuff. So we don't need this stuff here now since we did all of it already. Vertical integration, yes please. We have a clan, I'd like to do that too. Have him do that. Negotiate with the Entente. Begin negotiating with the Entente, including the Industrial Revolution, huh? Uh, but several people also won't give up easily. Taking initiative in the battlefield, the enemy's weariness in the home front. A number of cities we can control in Canada can help our cause. Offers peace talks. We go to peace. We could Navy invade, but I want to focus more on this area here in America, so. I'll uh, see so what we can do first. Oh! Okay. In the old days of the Socialist Party, successes were measured by how clean your sewer system was, especially in Wisconsin, where Morris Hillquit made his campaign to cl problems clean up the city. In reforming and organizing public maintenance services, Hillquit showed that socialism could reorganize systems without having to redefine or destroy the foundations of the system. The principle of sewer socialism must be taken to the whole. Uh, oh god. Uh, the nation and now the chain is broken. Many cities such as Pittsburgh are filled with pollution that fills the skies now that the revolution is over. Cities all across the country should be cleaned up and modernized. We hope the international community can appreciate a clean sewer as much as it does a skyscraper. Clean as sewers in the world. James Burham is dead. Oh no! Shocking news reached uh, the nation today as James Burnham has been found dead by gunshot with nothing but a short note to be found to imply it was suicide. However, a number of CSS officials uh, have been arrested as it is alleged that the suicide was staged and they did make it in the midst of an attempt to coup against him. As both Jay Lovestone and his sort of military officials report seeing, receiving reports from the CSS officers that a renegade faction of the CSS is responsible for these events, with the military agreeing to have Lovestone take charge of standing president until the crises can be resolved, with Lovestone's first act being calling for a day of mourning for the death of America's most recent founding father. A tragedy! Oh boy. Look at this guy. I think I've gotten him before. Oh, ooh, love stonianism. Oh, that looks really cool. I love that a lot, actually. Okay, so now we have love stone. How do we get Scott? So get learn some learn something in the, like you would with Scott. Do everything you would to get Scott now. Um, so, and then do his tree. And choose a purge Scott and technocrats or not. So now we can't do, we should probably cancel this one and, and that's the final revolution. Jay Lovestone finally has come to power even after the decades of hurdles thrown at him. At long last, an ultimate victory for world socialism should be implemented under the Lovestoneites out of the final enemies of the new regime are disposed of, especially Burnham's former rightist allies and military and propaganda orders. So we can choose a purge Scott and the technos, or not, choose a purge him and he'll flee to the next event. Choose to purge him. Okay. Red patronage. We may have disposed of the most overt enemies, but that doesn't mean we don't need a short support among our allies. Red patronage will reward those union leaders, military loyalists, and other prominent allies using a newfound influence while filing in or filling in recently open positions. So let's save just in case. It's always good to save uh, all your games. Because you never know if you might need it or not, so. This is a uh, been wild. Choose a purge him. Choose a purge, then not ambush him. So we're down here. I'm gonna have all y'all come down here. The fight of Lawrence Dennis. The death of founder, Lawrence Dennis, has been removed as a head of the CSS until the controversy of the CSS's internal traders can be resolved with. Uh, being controlled by the Red Army in the meantime, of course. Uh, our military advisors advise us to have him voluntarily retire, but we could also simply pin the entire plot on him. While this would cause a larger purge to occur in the CSS, it would allow us to concentrate more power. Have him try to execute have him retire. Rightist opposition purged. Our AWP rightists, opponents in the various state, uh, Divisions of military are currently being arrested for either collaboration of the plot against Burnham or for their other treachery, particularly the most nationalistic and technocratic members of the CSS, military or managerial class. Many Howard Scott's associates in particular are currently being investigated, and some of our military supporters, such as John Tisa, urges to arrest Scott himself and finish purging his inner circle. All this will leave our technocratic commission somewhat understaffed until we can reassert total control over them at a later date. Finish him off. So we need to purge him. We'll see what happens with that. We're still at war with these guys, huh? That sucks. 
I mean, this probably is not a good smart idea, but whatever. And these guys may be made. probably a really bad idea. But we're gonna do it anyways. We had Canada. Find the corrupt Dominion of Canada, home of the British exiles, has capitulated to Rogalora's empire. And, oh, uh, I mean, armies. Reports that the king is close circle flood the country, but that doesn't matter. We have now control over these large portions of land. What should we do with them? Annex them? I have to. It's North America. I We have to eat it. We have to eat it. Reunite with Alaska. That'd be good to do, too. There. Let's do all this stuff. Nice. Betty. So now we have to wait to purge. So we, we said we did purge him. Um, so choose choose purge in the technocrats or not. Choose to not. And he takes flight. Acting on a decision to purge Howard's Garden's technocracy. They're going to build the 1940s World Series. Please go ahead. Uh, uh, and it's technocracy. We move quickly to wipe away his problematic element, but not quickly enough. It was seen that Scott and his group of committed a loyalist caught wind of our plan and had taken flight, fleeing the capital into parts unknown. Premier Lovestone is infuriated over the turn of events, burning any and all involved, and even court martialing the guard on duty outside of Scott's home. With this dangerous technocrat out and about, and with his contacts spread all across America, there's no telling what Scott could get up to. We must remain vigilant. So now, he'll flee in the next event. Now, choose not to ambush him. Do not ambush in the next an event. Do not ambush him. Mary and King Hubert. Get technocrat puppets, that'd be cool, too. And more millies. Of course, more roads, and maybe some rubber as well. Not that nice. Can we actually do that, maybe? Maybe, maybe not. Ah, hello. Tactical bombers, plus air support. Ah. Enemy spotted with Scott Technocracy. Scott and Technocracy Inc. going underground. We've finally been largely unable to combat this traitor's cells. They've built up their numbers in hiding using Scott's nationwide network of contacts and allies. However, it would be seeming that we finally have one spot crushing these traitors uh, before they ship slip away yet again. Recent reports from our scouts in the field indicate that Scott and his group are currently hiding in Wisconsin, right next to the Canadian border, on a ready supply mission. The enigmatic Scott, easy to spot with his trademark suit, hat, and towering height, was spotted getting out of a car at Bayfield County Motel. With location known to us, many within our administration have stressed the need to strike now and cut the head off the snake once and for all, however. Lovestone is hesitant, almost paranoid, that Scott is one step ahead of him like he was in the back of Chicago, and now has shown hesita hesitation towards acting now. Should we force Lovestone hand, or we let the situation lie for now and trust our leader's instincts? So, if we don't remember, just come over here, do this, and then to do this, um, to get, well, we have Scott, we, have, we need to get Scott. Uh, choose a purge and a flee. Choose not to ambush him. Let Scott go. Can't do anything against him, right? Send every man we have against him. Well, let him go. And then he'll coup. Then when Scott coups, there are new elections between Scott and Loeb. Oh, we're actually doing okay right now. We have to do that too. Beat the living crap out of them. I think he pierces, huh? That sucks. Love's own circles. Oh, right. Ooh, that doesn't look good for us too, huh? Well, oh, Lovestone Circles. Among the very top of the socialist managers, Lovestone advocates and party officials are increasing numbers of Lovestone Circles, dedicated to reading and interpreting Lovestone's theories while also helping coordinate between them. His desires, Lovestone's inner circle, and practical policy. Those officials recognize and regionally designate existing clubs while creating new ones were needed. Yay, we did it. It's going to become uh, an invader. Where's the next capital? Ah, Port of Spain. Shouldn't be taking too long to get all that stuff done. Oh, we must have deployed more men. Reserves demobilized. With the emergency reserves called up for the war now that it's over, they've been demobilized and sent back to their homes, exhausted after. So so much fighting. Um we're going about Stone Mountain, Georgia, please go right ahead. Mission failed that we know next time. Heeding Lovestone's caution, or setting ourselves from striking a Scott while he was vulnerable has proven to be a massive mistake, even for even now. Militia is loyal to Scott, and Loeb's technocrats have served the capital, with many of our own troops secretly loyal to Scott and Loeb. Taking up arms for his cause, it would seem that there are any and all that viewed Lovestone as a tyrant have thrown their might behind the technocracy, Inc., and their allies on Loeb's CCCT, or CCOT, in desperate attempt to save America from despotic totalitarianism. Under socialist guise, now Chicago falls to technocratic forces, it would seem that a new age is drawn on a, a revolutionary state, the Asia of Technocracy. Allies of Technocracy, we finally have won! Whoa! That's cool. That's really freaking cool. The ascendancy of technocracy. Swatting inside the false technocrat 
Burnham and his authoritarian international successor Lovestone, the heralds of true technocracy have risen to lead America to a new rational proletarian's paradise. Now Howard Scott and his technocracy Inc. and Harold Loeb with his coalition of utopian technocrats called CCOT to compete in international internal elections to decide the fate of America's own brand of technocratic revolution. So I want to do both. That seems freaking awesome. I love technocracy sometimes. Triumph of the CCOT. The continent of comedian technocracy is a large and buried conglomerate of desperate technocratic groups, such as the Technical Alliance, the New Machine, the Utopian Society of America, and many more, all rally behind Loeb's banner in an attempt to finally dispel the plague of authoritarianism from America's soil. Finally victorious in their struggle for dominance, a CCOT will now attempt to guide America towards a truly paradisical utopia along the lines of democratic and aesthetic technocracy. Holy sh... Nikes. Oh wait, what happened here? Bruh. What the barnacles? Well, all right, get her done. Ah, I'm just not doing this one. Crap. Or we're using garbage here. That's better. These are holes. We see you fixing fixing up America still. Like we're still reeling from the damage done by the, from the Civil War. Construction. Oh, we don't even have a good artillery. Holy crap. Black Legion salutes the support of you, but that puts good head. Yay, I love local manpower. Black Legion terrorism. Burnham's economic policy. Oh, God. Political aftermath is still really bad. Economic aftermath is still very bad. British aid. Well, they're not doing so well over there right now. The like, economy lost. Oh. The Russian Republic, huh? I love buy. Ah, the USA Trilogy by Don Dos Passos. A uh, film montage of is writing and the social spirit come together in John Dos Passos' new book, USA. The story itself is an examination of 12 Americans that lived through the Depression and Revolution. Passos' writings combine snippets of newspapers, propaganda, and the conversation recalls on the streets during the terrifying months before liberation. Such unorthodox. Um, and creative writing is usually praised by the American Writers' Congress, but they ever mind remain silent. This is due to the book's depiction of extra-legal killings that took place throughout America during the Civil War by our soldiers. <clears throat> the nominal leader of the Writers' Congress. Ernest Hemingway, the book amounted to treason and sedition against the socialist government. However, his decision to censor the book and detain Dos Passos was overruled by con Congress. Hemingway's right. The council decides. A technocratic council does not wish to rule forever without a popular face to stand by. For the American people have always expected a single executive figure, as such. An internal election has been organized, with Howard Scott and Harold Loeb being the two main contenders in the race. While Scott pushes for a traditional approach as idealized by himself due to being the chief theorist of the leftist technocratic thought in America, Loeb instead pulls from the ideas of Thoreau and Bellamy, bridging an idealized a version of from Scott's ideology he calls utopian the technocracy. Despite their differences, both want both want blah, 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 both want what is best for America and their people, but there can be only one executive. So with the final votes being counted, the winner is Howard Scott or Loeb. Ah, they bring true to utopia. Defeating the authoritarian technocrats of Scott and his technocracy Inc., Harold Loeb and the Continental Committee on Technocracy now rise as one of the true heralds of American technocracy. Pushing for a utopian vision or uh, of the technocracy tied to Belen Belemiism. And the ideas of Thoreau, America is now in store for social humanitarianism and aesthetic technocratic oligarchism under a democratic framework towards the utopian society. We did it, my friends. Wow. So we got him. Yeah, we want, if you want me to play as Howard Scott, let me know, because we made I made plenty enough saves at the time of recording. So if you want me to play as him and his route, please let me know in the comments below. So Then, so when Scott coos, oh, we get Scott, then Scott coos, a new election between us. We have a number of alternative leaders, including Hemingway and the Technocratic Congress, and others you can find as you conquer America, but you can only pick one to lead. The rest can all be ministers. It has the same word as Scott, but with unique flags and names. That's cool. Tumbling mustard and doodab for the masses. Huh. Forment. Forment technocratic utopian idealism. It's better consumer goods. Tumbling mustard and doodab has become a sort of saying among Loeb's supporters, pulling its name for the two separate works of fiction penned by Loeb that have come to embody the avant-garde revivalism as his movement has espoused. In the spirit of this colloquialism, Loeb and his CCOT have pushed for to popularize avant-garde art, music, and wider culture, funding artists and creative types all across the nation in order to evolve contemporary American culture in a new and purified ascetic utopian for all, form for all, regardless of race, religion, gender, or any other divider. Forment, forment technocratic utopian idealism. In order for this new aesthetic revolution to be successful, 
Uh, the idea is for a cause must be spread and, and accepted throughout America. We shall use the famous faces and figures beyond our movement to spread ideas to the masses, ensuring that the populace adheres to our dogma and doctrine, giving us free reign in their passing our utopian and humanitarian goals. Lovecraft's New England. Oh, this is kind of cool. With great effort, we've come to control the lens of story in New England. As we work to bring this new region under control, local utopians and like-minded socialists have come to our aid, most notable here being one Howard Phillips Lovecraft, famous great American author and devoted utopian socialist. What should we do with this vital figure of American culture? Allow this great liver to live in peace with a craft aided by the state and given position in our cabinet. Ooh. We can trust this fellow author to be the face of the government. Lovecraft becomes the leader of the Radical Socialist Party. Social Democrats. Okay, well, we'll get into that as long as we still... Oh, oh no, we get him as... Oh, shnikes. We actually get him as leader? Oh, that's cool and all, but... That's a weird way for him to become leader. But Guggenheim's Alaska. With great effort, we've come to control the icy and wondrous lands of the last frontier. As we work to bring this new region under our control, the local utopians and like-minded socialists have come to our aid, most notable, are being one Simon Guggenheim, famous financier, art lover, and distant in law to Loeb through his wife's family, and recent convert to a, uh, to a staring of utopian market socialism fused with Loeb's technocratic ideas. What should we do with this father of American figure? Had Guggenheim's fast fortune upon the state? Position our cabinet? Give a position of lo local socialists under Rex Beach instead. Can we switch out leaders? I want to see uh, the other person again. So I don't mind. I, w I want Loeb because we spent so I spent hours trying to get Loeb. I want him back. As much I have played as Lovecraft, and I do want him here, but still. Energy accounting, perfect and, pu and purify the democratic system. Ooh. Reject authoritarianism or authoritarians and technocracy. Create faction harmonious compact for utopia. Though Scott brought some amazing and ingenious ideas to the table, we always seem to be gunning for an authoritarian form of what could otherwise be a liberating and egalitarian philosophy. He supports some forms of democracy, but it sought to empower the executive position, and the power of other council beyond reason. We stand opposed to such short-lived or short-sighted totalitarianism, and instead shift the technocratic movement to far more democratic and communist direction, but I think I'm going to end it here. The Utopian Technate of America. This seems really cool. I like this, and I appreciate that whoever left me in the comments saying we should try to go to this path, but if you enjoyed the first episode of this campaign, leave a like. Subscribe if you're new. Check out my Discord link in the description below, and I'll see you tomorrow. We're going to probably conquer a lot of the Americas, hopefully, and maybe even get into Africa or Europe. Thanks for watching, and have a great technocratic rest of your day.